put out that the sun shines down its power to all the world and makes the wind blow strong as it will. I want to hope gentle rains can fall upon the land so lovely earth can stay lovely still. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 390th Energy Week show, which I'm actually numbering 391 because the script for the other show has already gone online and it was 390. So that's that's that explains that. We had some problems with numbers in okay. the last few it's weeks. It's a wonderful story. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful run. Yeah, well, anyway, Guy Payne has come from Sion. Uh, S E O N, which is what is that again? I always forget. <laughs> Sustainable Energy Outreach Network. Our gremlin is operating behind us. Hopefully, we're going to be able to do without the gremlin for a while. But the the monitor has been flicking on and off. Um, so I think we should just go ahead. Um, we do have a, a poster back there, and I'll put it up so people can see it. Why don't I do that now? Um, all I have to do is find it. There it is. That's what the poster looks like. And here's what we look like. So it is the... Sion is the Sustainable... Energy. Energy. Outreach. Outreach. Network. network. Okay, Sustainable Energy Outreach Network. And it has heavy focus on architecture and building. Not exclusive, but heavy. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to be talking about is the upcoming Sustainable Home Tour. That sounds exciting. It is. I mean, it's, um, we've been, this is our fifth year. And um, for the past four years, we've had it as a road trip, road tour for folks traveling to different parts of Wyndham County, a couple times down to Greenfield, because mm -hmm. um, we had two homes there with really the intent of educating the public, sort of our primary group, so that they come to a better understanding, not just of the design, but what goes in, what's the meat and potatoes of the buildings itself. Right. From the wall systems to the kind of products and the kinds of processes and technologies that are now best practices and using your sign of there, if it's not sustainable, it's not per permanent, or you, you had if something it isn't sustain sustainable. If it isn't sustainable, its condition is terminal. Its condition is terminal. And actually, that's, you know, older houses can be converted, as as you're going to be telling people. Yes, that, yeah. That, that is, means that you can stop it from having a con terminal condition and convert it into being sustainable. Yes, yeah. But... Um, this time around, it's not going to be quite the same roadshow that it has been in the past. No, I mean, um, because in, in the past, probably we could reach about 50 people. And if things were staggered when they would show up, when folks would show up at, at a home, and the builder be, would be walking them through the, the home, and then someone else show, shows up, then you either get part of a story or not the entire story. So it made it difficult. I think the public loved being able to talk to the builder or the architect and ask the kinds of questions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a kind of touch, feel, show, talk in a very non-sales uh, approach. I mean, right. their whole focus was how can they explain what it is that we do to make these homes sustainable? Uh, or what we use the phrase high performance, which means consideration to um, energy efficiency, water and vapor management, indoor air quality, health and safety, aging in place, local products, uh, locally harvested wood, um, and and yes, aesthetics. Um, but it's it's all those pieces that come together to what we call high performance homes. Yeah, it's um, it, it's a different world. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, to the audience. I don't feel like going down and getting Brian, but maybe I should. That just flickered a little bit too much. Let's go for a couple of minutes and see sure. what happens. 
Um, um, so, so now, given COVID, mm -hmm. given the pandemic, we can have people traveling around. Um, you're asking an awful lot of the public to open up their home, uh, yeah. especially if it's a rainy, unpleasant weather. We were hugely uh, rewarded with four gorgeous weekends in the past. <laughs> well, you'll that's, be, that's not the case. In no, Vermont. you'll have a gorgeous weekend this time. It's just that people will have to do it indoors yeah. at their own home. And so now, um, so far, we have probably, we've got two more weeks to go, and we have about 36 people who have signed up. Um, and there's a particular sequence to all, there are two new homes. Mm -hmm. uh, one is a new home in Putney. Another is, uh, it's called the Sugar Bush House, uh, which was built to meet the qualifications or certification standards of North American Passive House. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Those are not easy standards. No, they are not. And, you know, for the public to understand, you know, that's sort of in-house jargon. <laughs> you know, so what do I get from this just in terms of, well, all they have is just one small stove, and that's it. In terms of and overall it, it, energy usage, it's it phenomenal. What kind of stove is it? I purchased it, Friends of, of the Sun. So really? <laughs> but is it a wood? I got to do my, my plug. Is it a wood stove? Or yeah. is it, I'm not stove. sure if it's a wood or pellet. I suspect it's pellet. Okay, okay. Um, so w which pellet, I, I'm not, not sure. Um, and the other is a Unity Homes, uh, part of the uh, division of Bensonwood, yeah. which is all high-performance panelized homes, and that, that's actually up in Norwich. So now with this virtual home, we're able to expand you beyond can go Northern farther. County. Maybe in the future, when we don't have to worry about COVID-19, you'd be able to do both, have a field trip and expand further um, virtually. That's possible, and this has taken a lot of our yeah, you know, this is a whole new experience for us. Yeah. Um, and we would still run into the issues of good weather um, and accommodating as many people as possible. Yes. Um, another home is an addition uh, to sort of an artistic community in uh, Putney. Okay. Uh, and then the last one is what you were re referring to is the 1880 farmhouse <laughs> that is still probably a two to three year project, oh, but man. you have an opportunity to begin seeing what we call a deep energy retrofit, yes. which is really going down to the studs. Yeah. You know, you're almost starting all over Those... again, but at the same time, it's Vermont has a history and a love oh, of it's... historic conservation. Yeah, I used to live in a house that was on a, very close to a mountaintop. And it was uh, built sometime around 1845. Mm -hmm. And when my window was closed in my bedroom and the <laughs> door was closed, the door had one of those old uh, keyholes. When the, when the window and the door were both closed, you could hear the wind whistling as it went through the keyhole. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, a, they were not well insulated, and they certainly weren't sealed. No, well, there's there's an interesting story around this 1880 farmhouse. Yes. When they took the wall system apart, they found a scythe. A scythe. A scythe. Shoes, a Bible, bottles. And the way the stories go, and I've shared this with other people, yeah. And they have found scythe blades in their wall systems. Really? Yeah. Scythes. It, it, it was an old superstition in the 1880s about how do you keep the witches and the goblins away. Oh, my gosh. And that's all, uh, well, now, how you know, do you get from the Grim Reaper to, <laughs> to, to this? I don't know. I, I worked at a school at one time. There was a fellow there who, who asked me about, he said, do you know anything about coins? And I said, what kind of coin? He said, I've got an old coin. I was taking my, the wall off my living room, and I found an old coin in the wall. And I said, oh? He said, yeah, it, looked like, it looks like it was made yesterday. And I said, what is it? He said, it's, it says one cent, but it's not like any cent I've ever seen. I said, what's the year? He said, 1793. And I said, okay. 
does it have a wreath on the back or a chain? <laughs> and, I, and he said, it has a chain. And I said, I think you found your daughter's college education. <laughs> <laughs> he was uh, shocked because I said, the first thing you got to do is put that in a safe play thing that you can carry and then take it to Boston and get it, get it um, uh, evaluated by a coin dealer. Yeah. Because that coin is not for insurance purposes because the coin is never going to be sold in a regular market. It would have to be sold at auction. <laughs> You're a raft of interesting stories, well, I got to tell you. <laughs> I, 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 what I do is I go out and find these things and then I memorize them. I've only got six of them. <laughs> <laughs> you just recycle those six Absolutely. stories? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I so, think, yeah, so the, um, the farmhouse um, is it's just a fascinating story. It was, mm -hmm. it was only 20 feet off the main road. Wow. Um, and so what they've done, because back then, traffic was not a big deal. Now they've moved it uh, 40 feet, additional 40 feet off the road. Right. So, I mean, this was a major pro project, but beautifully done by the architect, uh, Alan Benoit. Nice. Benoit. How big is the house? 1600 I think it's really? the one you you see on the well I think folks let's can, let's put it up yeah there we go yeah it's so, the one on which corner um the, the upper upper the left. lower right lower right yeah well the upper left one looks like it's an old house isn't that isn't that bit beautifully done yeah that's the unity home oh is it oh okay so it was Fine. built to look just like well the people who do you know the the people at Benson would know what they're doing yeah. And, you know, when people talk about modular homes, well, ladies and gentlemen, that is a modular home. <laughs> and I'll tell you something else, too. They could build another home on exactly the same design and it would look entirely different. <laughs> and there's no question about it. Because the thing that's modular is the, is the wall units and everything else, all the detail, all the trim, everything can be changed. Yeah. Um, you know, and totally... Um Fabricated. Yep. Inside. And, and one, of the, one of the really beautiful things about this is because it's made in a factory, you can get almost perfect. I, actually, I'm going to say you can get perfect weather, weather sealing. And because it's made in a factory, they can take the pieces to the site and have it built in three sunny days, and they never have to worry about the exposure of the building to rain. It's it, and everything fits perfectly. You know? It does. I mean, it's all CNC work. Yeah. So there's that, and then what is CNC work? Computer numerical c control. There you go. Okay, I want to make sure everybody understands, understands. The, uh, the the acronyms. Yeah, it is so easy to get ourselves oh, locked oh, yeah, in absolutely. To, to that. Absolutely. And even I have to admit, even in the, um, I mean. The, the design of the of the format or the, the format is going to be certainly an introduction by me to to the overall program and then each individual house. Right. Um, then there'll be a seven to eight, six to eight minute presentation by the builder um, or and slash designer. Okay. There will be just a brief overview of some of the sponsors and advertisers. Right. And then there's Q&A. Right. And really, I encourage, because we want this to be an educational piece for the public. We tried to keep the jargon out, but it slips yeah. in. So I really, we really encourage the public. Um, they're our primary focus to ask questions, some of the most basic questions. Well, people have to understand what they're getting. Yeah. One of the things that I that happened with me um, years ago, I did an interview with an with an uh, with an architect in Brooklyn, who built an an apartment building to be uh, ninety percent um, uh, of the way to 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 passive or ninety percent of the way to net zero actually, and he then added a solar array on the roof, which brought it to net zero. And that building was heated by floor heat mats in the bathrooms. Mm -hmm. That was the only was heat it. they had. And he said the, the air circulation system was so good that people didn't have to dust. 
And, you know, it, it, anyway, he talked about the fact that this was basically without the solar panels on the roof, which, of course, were a big money-saving thing. Um, the, the cost of the building was very nearly the same as it would have been if it were conventional construction. And I mentioned that to builders that I interviewed shortly after that for Green Energy Times, and they said, one of them said, he, he actually had a, a building that he worked on where the architect said to the customer, okay, we can do this two ways. We can either do it as a, as a, as a, um, pa a passive house, or we can do it as a conventional building. Now, the passive house will sa save you all, the, actually, it was 90% 90, 90 of the way to passive. So it was, your, your fuel costs would be down by 90%, assuming that you don't put in any solar system or anything like that. He said, we can either have your fuel costs go down 90% or not. And the guy said, look, I'm not a hippie. I want, I want a, an ordinary house. I don't want to pay extra. And the, the architect said, fine, I just want you to understand that conventional construction will cost you $3,000 more because you're going to have to have a heating system oh. and a chimney. And I'm, I told that story to a woman in the co-op and she looked like she was ready to cry because she had just finished building her home. Mm. And that's why people have to know and they really have to know if they're going to build a home, if they're going to buy a home and improve it, all of these things are. I'm going to, I'm going to ask you, um, uh, Guy, to, to explain what's in the poster before I go back to showing us. I, sure. I have an urge yeah. to get back to showing us. But. Um, the, upper, the upper left picture in the poster is the Unity Homes. It's called the Varm, Varm House. Yep. And uh, Varm is a name from Varmland in Sweden. Yes. Um, you know that, huh? I d I've heard of it. <laughs> um, which uh, Ted Benson has a, a, yes. a connection with Sweden. Right, right. And so that is the Varm model. Um, and, you know, the, the owners were impressed with the technology, the processes, the efficiency um, for that, that home. And you can see from, from the picture that that has a large solar array on it. Right. Yep. Which is probably providing all of the electricity that that building needs. Pretty much. Pretty much. I mean, we, we have a description on our website, and I if right at the very bottom of that um, poster there is Sion's website. Right. And on that website is a description of all the homes so it's just okay. not the graphic right um, on the upper right just going across um, is the addition um, Jonathan Klein uh, did the addition this is sort of an artistic community um, where people can come mm -hmm. and um, res and re reside and then the owner wanted his own sort of se separate place oh all done again with high performance fi features. Yes. And again, I, I didn't bring all the specifics because if we go in into the weeds, that's why was... people should go to your, <laughs> to your virtual home tour. Yeah. Um, Alan Benoit, uh, builder of Sustainable Design Vermont, uh, is in the lower right. That's going to be his house. Oh. Uh, he's going to be, he and his wife um, have cho chosen this. Um, they took away the the um, fireplace you were talking about the fireplace <laughs> yes. he said there was nothing scarier than being 20 feet up on the ground with a jackhammer take taking down the fireplace oh, no. so he he did the work him, he did him the work himself. himself yeah and taking down a fireplace <laughs> <laughs> but you'll get a chance to see the whole redesign they took down the porch the the pictures of the before and after or right just right. exquisite, but there is your your you know beautiful design, much like the upper left too. Is that, yes. that Vermont farmhouse? Yeah. And then on your lower left um, is the Sugarbush House, oh, okay. uh, which is sort of uniquely designed to sort of take advantage of the forested landscape um, within Putney. And there's uh, just a carport there. Um, 
designed to be, the living space will actually be on the first floor. Um, there's a number of fe features that um, Bob Swinburne of uh, Blue Time Collaborative and Mendel and Morse were the, the builders. Okay. Um, and they worked hand in hand, architect, homeowner, and the builder all, every step along the uh, way. Nice. Now this this poster says this is on Saturday, November 7th. Right. And it's going to be done at 10 a.m. to 11.30. Correct. Um, so everybody's going to be watching it at the same time. Yes. And are they going to be able to interact and ask questions? Uh, it'll be by chat. So it'll be a webinar. It'll I mean, be a there's, webinar. There's Zoom, you know, trying to control 50, 60 people on a regular Zoom doesn't work. So it will be what's called a Zoom webinar yeah. where only the presenters will be visible. Right. All the questions then will be by yeah. chat. Right. If and we'll you, give directions for, for folks. You know that you know about the Brattleboro uh, um, representative town meeting? That was done on Zoom. And the town meeting members had to be able to ask. There were 140 people involved yeah. in that. But the thing is, it, it was a big overhead in terms of in terms of human input by the people who were running it and it was done absolutely stunningly beautifully but it was not easy work no um anyway i th i think i'm gonna i'm gonna go back yeah. to us and i think you know one of the things which was great and i think we always have to do this is <clears throat> many of the local folks really stepped up to, to the plate to help sponsor Oh, so, nice. so there are all the sponsors because this was, this is a, this was intended to be in the past a fundraiser for us. Yeah. But now um, the cost of producing this has been significant. So Tim Wessel of Vermont Films has yes. been working with us. Oh, nice. And putting together the um, pro overall pro program. Nice. Uh, so we may not make as much money this year. <laughs> um, when people people have to register through uh, right there where it says, see, um, halfway down underneath the descriptions where it says reservations are required, donations appreciated, then there's the link to our main website. It's the home home tour. So this is, the link is to www.cion.info slash home tour. Right. And you yeah. can re reserve for free <laughs> or do donation. I can actually put that into the into the, this show's information at BCTV so that a person can, so that when a person looks at the, sh at the show, he should be able to find the link on his screen. Oh, okay. Way. I'll Great. try to do that. All right. Um, I'm going to switch this back to us. If I, there we go. Look, it's us. <laughs> so you, this is something that I think a lot of people are probably going to find useful. And, um, you know, we've got the COVID-19 thing going on, so people can't really go out and shop the way they used to. No. But it it is a place where people can get an introduction to uh, the people who are doing the work on the ground the, the, and the architects who work, I guess, in their offices. <laughs> but but it, it will give people an understanding of questions to ask. Absolutely. I mean, part of it is ask questions on the jargon, ask questions as to why did you do it this this way. Yep. All of the builders and architects are all members of Sion. Yes. So the public, if they didn't get a, as much of an explanation as they like, they can go back and they can contact them if they simply go to our website and see who are the, you'll find links to our members. There's right. a membership page. Um, and they're all there, so you can follow up if need be to ask further questions. Right. And I think people should understand that I think probably everybody who's in building, including architects and people who are in construction and so forth, they all know 
that the people who are their customers are unlikely to understand certain things and they don't mind answering questions. Yeah. That... In fact, I think they'd feel better about answering questions because that way they have a contact with their customers and they can feel some kind of assurance that the customer yeah. really does understand what's going on. Yeah, I, it, it's funny. I asked my cousin to, to give some feedback on a preliminary draft. Yeah. And he said, this is great, but I got I to gotta ask you these like six <laughs> questions. <laughs> and, you know, one of them is, why do you build on a slab? As opposed to? As opposed to a seller. As seller. People from, you know, middle Atlantic states, you know, the, their, their mindset is something where you build a seller, don't, don't you? Well, I've um, known people but, who say you should never build, you should never own a house that has a sump pump. <laughs> <laughs> because that's an indication that somebody spent money because they were worried about it flooding. <laughs> <laughs> You've always got to worry about moisture and water vapor and management. Water, bulk, yeah. Bulk water. And and my reaction to building on a slab and having a cellar is, if you want a cellar, have a cellar, but put it in your backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Rickenbacker, do you know, recognize that name? Sure. Eddie Rickenbacker, who, by the way, owned the Indianapolis 500 Speedway at one time, if you can imagine that. And... When he, he wrote in his autobiography that when he was a child, child, teenager, he and his father dug a huge hole in the backyard because his father had managed to get somehow a, an extremely large barrel. And they put the barrel into the hole with a trap door so they could store things down there. It was their root cellar. Yeah, I was going to say, it's got to be a root cellar. Yeah, sure. but they did not, you know, that is not, I, I'm, I wouldn't recommend that people put their root cellar in their basement unless they've got some, and of course, the old New England homes usually have basements, cellars. Right, yep. Um, and that in itself is a problem. There, There's the other problem, and you know, why that is a problem is that Un unless you actually know, you you don't know whether there's radon getting into your house. You have to have it mm -hmm. tested. But it will get in if it can, mm -hmm. if you have a cellar. If you have a slab, that can, that is kind of automatically mitigated. Right. And the Mandela Morse house is on a slab? Yes. Um, I think because they moved the... Um, I'm, I'm assuming so. The 1880 farmhouse, I'm, I'm assuming that will be on a slab now. Um, I don't know about the others. Well, well, you know, it's it, they're going to do things that the architects and and other people who are involved believe are the right things to do. Yeah, yeah. And um, you know, the the the. The, the cost of the seller is is one consideration, but the nuisance value of the seller is, um, <laughs> it, it can be huge. Absolutely can be huge. We have an 1820 house. Who, we it's being, a nuisance, my wife and I. Oh, dear. It is a nu nuisance. Have you thought about tearing down the, the, the walls? <laughs> see what's, see inside. what's inside? I can't. <laughs> That'll be a great... Great story. <laughs> the, I think the, it was moved from Cambridgeport. To it was moved from uh, Saxons to Saxons River. When I lived in Northfield, New Hampshire, uh, at the on the top of a mountain, I lived in a farmhouse that had a barn, and the barn had been moved up from Northfield. Yeah, and you know they they moved the barn. Of course, they moved it in pieces, but um, that's what they did, and. I had a neighbor whose whose father had been involved in actually moving that uh, before he was born. And my neighbor was a guy who was probably 68 years older than I was. <laughs> so this was a long time ago. Yeah. The house yeah. was, the, the barn was moved in the 1870s. And it was, I think, the best barn I'd seen in the area. It was in perfect wow. condition. Yeah, yeah. But barns can survive... 
in ways that houses can't because they're open. Mm -hmm. And um, so given a chance, they will survive well. But the houses, the, yeah, the, the, the um, air quality is extremely important for the longevity of the house, not just its occupants. But well, I you think, are. you know, also what I think um, Efficiency Vermont is just beginning to recognize, and a, and a lot of folks, is, is that there's a whole issue called healthy homes. Yes. And that is whether it's insects, whether it is dust, whether it is all those things that inhibit the the health of folks mold. from asthma, mold. Yep. Um, and I know, um, I think Rutland Regional Medical Center was also helping in terms of financing some of the um, renovations of, of homes because of the repeat visits into the emergency room by so many folks. Really? Yeah, so healthy homes is now getting to be a major, major concern uh, of builders, designers. Well, one of the things, you know, I, I do my blog every day, and um, I, I calculated recently, you know, I've, I've put up links to over 40,000 articles. And to get each article, I have to go through something like 27 headlines. You do the math, I've looked at over a million headlines. And so I'm, I'm, there are certain themes that I keep hitting, which is why I'm doing that, is, is to know about the themes. And the, the um, one theme that I keep hitting a, a lot recently is various health organizations, World Health Organization, places, um, places air quality as being among the top four causes of death and it's it's pollution from of various kinds it's worse in places like india and and yeah. parts of china but it's bad it in fact the the um the american lung association in california did a study of vermont and one of the things that they came up with was that something like the I think it was four. It was four hundred and eighty dollars per person per year, the cost of of pollution from vehicles. Now, if you think about that in terms of the question of whether it's a healthy home that you're in or a home with mold or or other problems, that you could have a lot of medical bills yeah. just develop out of those problems. When you have your medical centers making themselves or helping finance some of these homes, that's telling you something. Yes, yeah. it is. It is. So I think, you know, we we do talk a lot about the energy efficiency and right. durability and water and vapor management. I think something that we don't spend a lot of time talking about is just the sheer comfort. <laughs> yes, and that's you another know, thing about these very, very well insulated well sealed homes that is is really interesting is that they're more comfortable right and there are a lot of people that will enter a project or enter a contract and be constantly worried about the financing and the financial impact on it all and then when all is said and done and they're living in in the home it's like this is nice <laughs> <laughs> Well, for a lot yeah. of people, once they get past the dollar values, that's the bottom line. Yeah, yeah. And, but the, th the thing that I have heard from people is, um, I did an interview with some people with a, a home in, in, I think it was Rutland, who, who had the, in the, it had been insulated. I think Green Mountain Power was involved in that. Oh, I, know, I think I know the project you're talking about okay. as soon as you mentioned Rutland. Yeah. Yeah. And... Um, they said one of the one of the really beautiful things was before the renovation their daughter's room was really cold in the winter and i think it was hot in the summer and all of a sudden without any ventilation going on inside it the whole house evened out and the reason was because there wasn't any insulation between the rooms one room was heating the other <laughs> The, the, when they put in the insulation the heat and the, the air sealing around the house, 
Yeah. It was all on outside walls, and all of a sudden, the temperatures on the inside of the house became very even. So they didn't have to worry about the kids getting cold at night. Mm -hmm. Sure. And that that is one of those. Or, alternatively, in order to keep the kids' bedrooms warm, because the he heating system wasn't really adequately designed before the renovations, they would have to crank up the heat in the living room. So there, there were rooms that were too hot. Yeah. yeah. I mean, many of the ventilation systems that were designed at the beginning didn't take into account any future re renovations. And that has to do with probably more commercial buildings yeah. um, than residential buildings. Um, but um, the more re renovations, the more co complicated it gets, unless you take down the walls. <laughs> well, <laughs> just make for large, large rooms. That house that I lived on near the mountaintop in New Hampshire had uh, three chimneys. And two of them were were only about six feet apart, but they, they heated different areas of the, of the house. And then the third one was at some distance in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And the heating in that house was very uneven. And of course, with the wind blowing through your closed window, um, it, it made it even more so. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, it, it was one of those things that you had to be kind of, you had to kind of live with it. And um, and renovated made it a whole lot easier. That was the first renovation. The second renovation was the one that actually put in the the uh, insulation. The first renovation was just taking out the old wood stoves and putting in oil. Yeah. yeah. But um, and I, uh, you know, it's it's an entirely different thing now. So, oh yes. Yeah. And in some cases, it will, especially when you get into the re renovations. You may want to think in terms of not all at one one time. You know, it's it could be a year. You know, a couple of year long projects. Um, you know, our really great consultant Peter Yost, and who lives in Brattleboro, his took ten years. Brattleboro, <laughs> yeah. So of course, a lot I'd had to do when he was available to do any of the work. Right. Um, right. But. Um, you know, Brattleboro has a really fine collection of people. This and this broader area. Oh yeah. Going up to, to places like um, where is Benson Wood? Is that in Lebanon? Benson Wood is in Walpole. Walpole, that's right. However, their manufacturing of Unity Homes is in Keene. Oh really? Okay. But these are these are still kind of local to Brattleboro. And, Absolutely. And Sion must have some really stunning <laughs> people as members. We're blessed. Yes. I mean, um, and, you know, we have a whole uh, checklist of when you're interviewing a builder, here's the questions you need to ask. Well, and... And, you, and it's not asking you to be an expert in building science. It's mainly about how do you stay current? Oh my gosh. Um, how do you do a building assessment? You know, walk me, me through how you do that. So we have uh, a sheet for, for homeowners about how to, how to interview a builder. You and it was put together by, by P Peter Yost. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had him on my show. Um, you, but you do remind me of somebody I was talking to who was telling me, a kid in high school cannot count on getting out of high school and getting a job at the place where his father works as a carpenter because you really need more than a high school education to swing a hammer these yeah. days. Yeah. And that's true of, you know, so many things in building. It, they're not what they were. And, and there are still a lot of people out there who say, I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this for 50 years. And it doesn't quite hold true the way they'd like. No, it's it's in interesting. Um, on our website, if they go to our blog, yeah, um, you'll see an article that I wrote um, using the words of Ted Benson. Okay. Of ben Benson would back in 2011, and he was talking about the state of the building industry and how it has morphed and how it has changed and the need to have master builders who, I mean, this gets into the old time apprenticeship program 
which we don't have here. Right. Um, and it's it was an article on a couple of apprentices that Ted had someone um, from France and then another one from Japan. Um, sort of links to his block in 2011. But you're right. Things have changed. It is so much based on science now. It's right. so much based on being able to read um, reports and do the kind of critical thinking. And it's the phrase that many of the educators use when you talk about systems thinking. Right. It's being able to understand what are you doing, what is the impact that that's going to have on related um, methods and processes both subsequently and almost whenever you're doing the work, you're constantly thinking what's its impact, what its interrelationship right. to everything else, right. interrelationship with water, right. interrelationship with airflow. Right. So, so anyway, we I'm, may be I'm coming looking, doing that. I'm looking at the time. We've, we've used up about 40 minutes <laughs> of the 30 that you had said we would use. <laughs> well, maybe sort of give a quick summary of, yeah. of this. Um, first of all, I, I would just encourage folks to um, go to Sion's website, follow the, the link that is right there on the, um, on the screen. Right. And you'll be able to read about the descriptions. And right there, you can register. Uh, on Eventbrite, so either um, you can either register for free or you can register through a donation. You know, I'm, we'd love you to donate. I, I <laughs> cannot find where my where my mouse cursor is, and it doesn't seem to be. Wait a minute, there it is. I see it now. There, now I've got the the, uh, yeah. the poster back up so people can see the. It is www.seon, and is it dot, just dot .com? Dot .info. Dot .info, I'm sorry, dot .info, it's this, what I'm seeing here. www.seon.info, and you go there and you can find all kinds of things, I would imagine. You can. Um, you can find all our members, or organizational members, but also, if you go www.cion.info backslash home tour, which is right on that screen there, right. you can go, you can read about the descriptions, the content, the processes that were used for each home, so you can have a cheat sheet ready be, before. It can also be the poor man's, so to speak, um, version of the, of the free tour. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you can still go on our website and register for free. So there's even yes. a. So it the, gives and you there a are there are good reasons to do that if you're interested in in actually if you're interested in construction for any reason. Um, it's it, I I am interested in construction because my work focuses on um, energy efficiency, energy climate change, and things like that. And this is something that's right there. I'd love to see your your name come up. <laughs> well, you know, seventh, I, it might, it might. I'm I, I'm in the middle of trying to get Green Energy Times up, up done going to, going to press, and it, hopefully it's going to be to press a week from today. Okay, which means the day before election day. So I'm writing. Oh, this is the one you were telling me. About. I am okay. writing an article about you know, what what comes after election without knowing the results. And if Green Energy Times is published six days later, it might be going out with a, with a vote still not completely counted. Well, it will be not completely counted, but I mean without knowing what the, what the um, um, electoral college count will be. <clears throat> Without knowing who the next president will be, and even if it did, it would we'd have to assume that Donald Trump is not going to um, challenge the election. Mm -hmm. And um, although he has given us a, a possible alternative to that, which was that he said, "What do I do if I lose the election? Maybe I'll have to leave the country." <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. I have no idea what's going to come out of this election. So. Back, I think, to us. To us. 
Saturday, November, November 7th, 10 to 11.30. 10 to 11.30. And I, everybody is invited. That is true. We even had someone register from Illinois. <laughs> that was the beauty then of going vir virtual. Yes, that's right. That would yeah. be the beauty of going virtual, wouldn't it? You can you could possibly start getting getting sponsors from Illinois. Yeah. One last thing, um, Alan Benoit, who did the um, the ret restoration, the deep energy retrofit. Yes. You can go on to Button Up Vermont's website. Right. And on November fourth, he's going to be doing a preview of this house as oh, really? well. Okay. Yeah. So Very it's Button nice. Up v Vermont. Okay. Very good. And. We could a person could just search for button up Vermont and find yeah. it. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Well, I think we should encourage people to to uh, participate in the in the uh, sustainable home tour. Sion, sustainable Oops. outreach. Sustainable energy outreach. Energy network. outreach network. Okay. You well, know, we struggled a long time to get that name. <laughs> I struggled a long time to remember it. <laughs> It's, and I've never remembered it. It's, I know. it's nothing new. But, you know, I, I get so confused by the acronyms that we have here in Vermont because mo most of them have a V in there somewhere, and I, I can't tell them apart. <laughs> and here you've got one that should be easy, easy to remember. And S-E-O-N somehow in my mind comes southeast. What? <laughs> Sustainable yeah. energy. Yeah, well, that is true. Sustainable Energy Outreach Network. Network. I got it right. You did. Okay. Dot info, because that's what Dot we info. are. It's okay. giving people the information. And I hope that everybody will. Uh, Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.